This is Bethel Advocate with Marie Andrus, part three of Making Raviolis. Hello again. As you can see, my pasta that was resting under the bowl where we last left it in part one is just lovely. It, it, it is at rest. It does not stick to my hand. It does not stick to my surface. It's in perfect equilibrium, and that's what we want. Rested, relaxed pasta dough. And I'm going to cut it into four pieces and work with one piece at a time. And in order not to have this dry out, I'm going to put it back under the bowl where it was resting until I'm ready to use it. Now because I cut it, I just exposed some moist surfaces. And I want to get this ready for my good old pasta machine. Um, you see these around everywhere. They usually have attachments on the back for making fettuccine and other things. But today we're interested in just this front part, which is the rollers. It's going to save me the push and pull of that nice big pin that nice old Italian ladies are born knowing how to do. But the rollers here are adjustable from one to six, meaning on every adjustment it brings the roller closer and it's going to make this dough thinner. I don't want six. That's too thin to support my filling. I don't want four either. It's too thick. And my main objection to purchased ravioli is that in order to withstand the transportation and having people dump it in their pot and dump it in their strainers, they make the dough too thick and too sticky. And the delight of homemade ravioli is it melts in your mouth. It floats. It doesn't land. So what I'm doing here is I've taken my quarter piece and just with my hands I am working it into a fairly equal sort of oval with, with squared off ends. Something that will fit into there, but in this thick state, and stretching is good. Pasta dough loves to be stretched. The more the merrier. And I have it here on setting number one, which is the widest part. I put it in and I give it a quick crank through. Now, is it sticking? Is it moist? I'm very lucky. It is not. It's very good. Very good. If it were, when it starts to get sticky, I use granulated flour because the last thing I want to do is start heaping flour onto this. That will make it tough. And the granulations actually encourage the slide, you know, just like little ball bearings. So that's when I bring my granulated flour out. And you can see how very little I'm using just to prevent it sticking in the machine. So now I go to number two. Trust me, this is a lot easier than using a rolling pin. And look at what's beginning to happen. It's beginning to get translucent and a little bit too long. So to make it easier to handle, I'm going to cut that in half and go to number four.
and finally to number five. Now, if number four is about where commercial ravioli stops, I'm going to go to number five. When I'm doing fettuccine, I do not go to number six, but I go through number five twice. There it is. That's exactly where you want it. And you can see that it is practically translucent. Lovely egg color. Just not seeing anything here but eggs. No preservatives. No fancy things. Just those beautiful brown eggs. There we go. Okay. And again, for ease of handling, I'm going to cut this one in half. Now, when we were preparing to do this tonight, we discovered that we could not find our crimper, um, which is like a little wheel that is serrated, and usually they're brass, so they're heavy. And the trick is, is that when you then cut ravioli with them, it crimps or presses the edges together because we want to make these sealed little pies. And there's a couple ways we can, so I will improvise with a pizza cutter and a fork. Uh, another thing, of course, you very often see those ravioli stamps, and I'll, I will show you kind of both ways. So if I were using a ravioli stamp, for example, I am going to take, and you see that I'm using a common table teaspoon, and I'm mounding it. That is a ravioli filling. Could I tell you how much that is? Well, a mounded tablespoon, maybe? And I am leaving at least two to two and a half inches between each drop of filling. And I'm seeing that I'm getting my nice little mortadella in every one of them. And it looks like I'm going to get four lovely ravioli. And in terms of quantity, you know, it depends what else you're serving. If this is a uh, pasta course only, I would say that probably four to six ravioli, five ravioli a person is plenty. If it's your entire meal, I would judge at a few more. So I've laid these out, and if I were using a ravioli stamp, this would be my bottom layer, over which I would impose my top layer. And then I would spread it out to make the edges even, like so. Press them down a little bit. And take my ravioli stamp then and stamp each one in between. I don't have a ravioli stamp and I don't have a crimper, not to worry. First we will even up our edges with this pizza roller. to moisten the edges to get them to stick together. Uh, just pressing them together like this it will give it a good hold. 
These are also, I think, strictly defined as tortelloni, which is to say big ravioli. I happen to like my ravioli big. When I'm doing small things for soup, then I'm in another, another church altogether of tortellini, which is rather different. Okay, and we are going to do very well with this. Now, you see me, I, I am discarding these trim scraps, but I am not discarding these cut scraps at all because I am going to get one or two more ravioli out of them. So you can see how you really have to trust your eye in terms of how does all of this work. Fold that over. Crimp with my fork a little bit. I'm doing this a little differently. Cut that off, you see, and I have a perfectly nice ravioli that I'm certainly not going to let go to waste. Let me give that one another crimp here. Make another little ravioli out of this piece. Pull this back. And you know, if something starts to misbehave like this, you can work it in your next batch. So, never, never any reason to fret. These are my little odd shaped corner raviolis. But believe me, your your audience will be very happy you didn't waste a bit. There, I got two more raviolis. So I have a nice one portion of ravioli to go. Now, notice that I am uh, placing them to wait for the rest of my batch on a cloth. An old tablecloth is nice, and you can see these have already started to stick uh, because I have put them on a smooth surface. The only surface that will prevent them from sticking is not a ton of flour, but a nice piece of cloth. An old piece of muslin, the, the older the tablecloth the better, frankly. Because you can see that if you let them sit on a counter surface or a cutting board surface like this, a glass surface, um, they would be impossible to pick up. Um, even on wood, they will the filling will eventually come through. But now that they're safely on cloth, you see, I don't need to worry. I can let them wait here have them dry out a little bit, which doesn't hurt in terms of handling them. There is my six. And I will keep on doing it until I get through all of the pasta in that bowl.